my name is Zoe. I am the Tipsy Psychic. Mmm. <sighs> Drinking away the pain. So by pain, I mean I'm getting braces soon. And it's gonna fucking suck. Today we're gonna talk about the Taurus Gemini cusp compatibility with a Leo. Oh! So, fun fact, I am a Taurus Gemini cusp, May 20th, so I always like talking about me. <laughs> I'm a YouTuber after all, so I watch myself a lot. A uh, Leo might feel like you're a little too unreliable at times. You both are definitely on the same page. It's very important to honor your heart and your feelings in this relationship. It is. It certainly is. Why is this fucking annoying me so much? You know, I'm trying to get into scarves because I feel like Tauruses rule the neck and I kind of just like want to adorn my neck, but I might just stick to necklaces. I don't know. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah. Always be honest with yourself about them. It's really good to set boundaries and have a plan, but remember to just let go, let loose. Chill, enjoy yourself. What was that? I don't know. Always be honest with each other. Let there be no secrets between the two of you. If there's ever a situation that is really conflicting and it's really affecting your heart, it's important that you deal with it. Don't let those emotions get the best of you. Make sure you're actually trying to solve any of these problems. Spending a lot of time with a Leo might be a little tiring because you both exude so much energy and burnout might come a little quicker. Being with them is very thrilling and you both vibe really well together and they just take up a lot of energy. Leos can be the more dominant one out of the two of you. It's not that they're necessarily bossy, but they definitely give you a vibe that they are more domineering. And that is not something you're going to like. And it will be a natural instinct for you to feel like you need to act out or feel like you need to rebel. This is a very empathically linked pair. You always are on the same page with how you're feeling. When you're in sync, you're very linked up. You will know even if the other person isn't in the room with you, you'll know exactly how they're feeling. Like if they're having a bad day, you'll have a bad day. If they're in love with you, you'll feel even more in love. There is a deep emotional connection. You have a very special bond. It allows you to really get each other. How you act with your Leo is really going to reflect on how you act with your friend. You may be extremely empathically linked and you're able to sense each other's feeling. But that doesn't mean that you're very accepting of them. Accepting of them. Them. Yikes. <laughs> like, it doesn't mean you're very accepting of all these feelings all the time. Feeling them is one thing, but making sense of them, ooh, that's a whole other ball game. And that's going to be a challenge. There are feelings that might come up quickly that you're not even ready for. So it's very important for you to be able to grasp what that feeling is and be okay with it because the feelings will be very intense. Emotional intelligence is a very big theme for this match. Cheers to that. Make sure you are you. Make sure you do you and your part too. Whoa, that rhymed. Relationships take work on both sides, both. Make sure that you are also working on your relationship and you're not just letting your Leo do it. Make sure you're actually putting the effort in to keep it going. You have to work on your emotional stability. Do your best to keep your feelings in check. Mood swings can really get in the way of your relationship. In order for you to make this work, you have to be very self-aware and you need to catch up. And I tell you, as a Teremini, like when you say catch up, like we're the cusp of energy. So it's like, oh my God, like we are energy, you know? Like how can someone else be that 
much energy. But Leos demand a whole different type of energy. And you may have trouble keeping up with them at times. And that's a lot because you are the cusp of energy. Like energy is your forte. But Leo expands their energy differently. This relationship is the real deal. It is. It's not a joke. <laughs> If it's not a joke, why do I feel so funny? <laughs> and the Taurus Gemini might feel like it's not lighthearted enough. They might have a difficult time taking it seriously. And you, we, the Taurus Geminis, the Tereminis, might feel like it's not lighthearted enough. We might have a hard time taking it seriously. At first, especially. When it comes to feelings, you both are so connected. You always know when something is bothering them because you can feel their agony. You can feel it. You know when something is really exciting to them before they even tell you about it. Because like you can feel their enthusiasm. Sometimes it's really hard to know who is feeling what. And that fucking sucks. But really understanding feelings beyond that is really going to be a challenge. Really. It really is. Yep. A Leo gives so much of themselves in this relationship. And frankly, you need to work on giving more. Like, you can forget to do your part sometimes. And that doesn't mean you have to take on their problems, or feel like you have to take care of them, or their life. In fact, it's very important that you just take care of your life. Yours. Like, don't take on anything for them, you know? And just own up to what you, wink wink, are in charge of. If they do something and people think it was you, make sure you make it very clear that it's not your problem. You do you, boo. You have to be careful not to be irritated and restless. That will not be good for your relationship. No, it will not. Leo will want to take charge. They may not see it that way, but you won't like feeling like someone is telling you what to do or is acting superior to you. And this is one of your biggest pet peeves. It sure is. It sure is. Yep. It is. When someone acts like they know best. Uh-uh. That is not something that we easily tolerate. No, no it's not. You adapt to each other's feelings. Even if your Leo is putting a big smile on their face. And they say they're really, really happy. And you can sense that they're actually really, really unhappy. And that something's wrong and you'll feel it. And it might take you a second to really put the pieces together that it's not actually your feelings, it's actually their feelings. So it can cause some conflict. That's one of the reasons why it's so very important to be in control. Like you both have to be in control of how you're feeling. If you are not able to keep your feelings in control, then you can forget about being with a Leo. Okay, look, being self-sufficient and not depending on anyone is a big part of who we are. We don't like to rely on other people. We're lone wolves in many ways. We're very independent and that's something that we might need to change. Independence is like freedom to you. So it may feel like you're giving up some freedom. I can't stand this. I'm too trapped. I don't have enough freedom. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the way that's how we do it that that is but you just have to see it as putting in more effort towards your relationship yep you don't have to do it all by yourself anymore oh my god <laughs> I feel like I look like the mad scientist you have a partner to help you remember that look you have to be able to distinguish what is in your heart Mm -hmm. Make sure you're aware if whatever you are feeling is what they're feeling or what you are truly feeling. Because the thing is, like, it's not always different. The reason you guys are so empathically linked is because you do feel the same way about most things, you know? But it's important to be able to distinguish what's going on. 
It really helps if you can also detach from your feelings from time to time. It may take some practice though. You do have an ego, yep. And sometimes a sense of entitlement might take over you. And you have to be careful not to be too egotistical, all right? Leo wouldn't be the most intuitive match for you because you would butt heads with them often. You both set the bar so high for your relationship that you might feel like you have trouble reaching it. You don't take your relationship lightly and you don't wanna screw it up, but that also means that you might end up letting each other down. And it's usually the Leo who will feel something and you're the one who's like, is this how I'm feeling? Or am I just feeling what they're feeling? <gasps> It's like you are going to be more empathically in tuned with them a lot of the time, I guess. Is that like a word, in tuned? I have no idea. No more wine, beer, or not beer? That is the question. Beer. It's just one of those days. One of those days. One of those days. Whoa. So it's usually when they're having a bad day and then you'll have a bad day too. Yes. Hmm. Mm. Already? It usually happens at some point, but not usually this soon. So like they're having a bad day and then you have a bad day and you won't actually realize that it's your experience, I mean their experience that it's actually them having a bad day and you're just experiencing it until after it's over. Never keep your feelings bottled up because that will only make things worse. So why? Pushing your emotions away will only cause you to feel aggravated and upset. You have to meet each other halfway and you're going to have to find a middle ground. As friends, you can be super honest and caring. Like you don't keep a lot from each other. Like you're very open and you tell each other things and it's like you've known each other forever. The important thing to know is that when this relationship does work, it's fucking awesome. It's wonderful. Like it's completely worth the effort. Like it's all going to make sense if you can work on it together. This is such a powerful bond and it's very rare, very. You both are incredibly connected. It's just very important to be able to work on your emotional intelligence and being able to identify with how you are feeling and truly understand your emotions. And when you can do that, everything else will be a piece of cake. And I really want one right now. Unfortunately, this is something that a lot of people have to just go through before they can hit that sweet spot. You might find yourself being the one to help your Leo chill. Yep. You'll help them settle down when they're all riled up. They're very powerful and you'll constantly be trying to cool them down. I'm like, chill the fuck out, Leo. And you're not just doing it for them, you're doing it for you too. That might not bother you too much. But if it does, then this probably won't work for you. No, no it will not. Once you set the bar high, it will basically probably be impossible for you to lower it. When you go into a relationship with each other, you have high expectations and lowering your standards ain't simple. No matter what kind of romantic relationship you have, expect it to be very lustful. Expect passion. Expect desire. Expect a very erotic vibe. Ooh. Sex would be amazing. And you both are so empathic, so it's going to make sex ten times better. It's easy to get very caught up in how you're feeling, but you have to act like adults and try to deal with that. Deal with them. Deal with those feelings. You have to take the time to work through things together and have faith in one another. Compassion is key. As I said before, what do you get when you work on it? Like when you have put the effort in? Like everything is worth all that effort. I know it's hard to believe when it happens, but like it gets so much better, but you have to like get through that. Unfortunately, most people who are on this couple, they 
deal with so many turbulences that they like break up before they can hit that speed, sweet spot and work through things, you know? I'm not saying like you should stick through things with someone if you're really not getting along and you're, you're like, this isn't fucking working out for me. But if you can work through things, then you should do it. You should, because what you're getting is like, it's like Wonderland, you know? <laughs> and yes, I totally believe in Wonderland. Yeah, but unfortunately, it doesn't happen very often because most of the time, these two are just unable to settle their differences. They can't just set their differences aside and actually work on things. It's just, things don't work, I guess, that way. And that's why this combination is so rare. Because when it's working, it is like one of the most powerful couples in the zodiac. When it comes to friendships, you don't need to be hanging out with each other every day to have a close friendship. It is very common for you to maintain friendships, like strong friendships, miles and miles away from each other. It is also very common for you to be very empathically linked and be able to sense how you both are feeling from like opposite ends of the globe. And that is very powerful. So don't give up. It may be tempting to stop trying to make it work because it's not easy. But my advice is to never stop trying. And that means never stop trying on both ends that goes for Leo's and for Tereminai's because when one of you is just doing all the work then it's not worth it anymore. You can be very hard-headed and strong-willed, sounds like the Taurus in you, and the Leo can be very assertive. So instead of backing down when your Leo is assertive, like they're used to a lot of signs doing, you are not afraid to go head to head with them and stand your ground. It can feel intense at times. You both will have this natural instinct to be in charge in your own way. However, you can't let that happen. Neither one of you can take on the dominant role. Oh boy, how does that work? But neither one of you can take on that role if you want this to work out. You might have to let someone else make the rules or something else make the rules. As long as you're not making them for each other. And that is a key here to making this combination work. Even if you can both brainstorm like an agreement of, or a set of rules that you put in place together, make a compromise. Because once you have some guidelines, I know it sounds kind of like cheesy to like put rules or make like a contract, but just so you have some guidelines of like how this is gonna work. Because if you both try to establish rules for the other person, that's like, no, that's not gonna work for you. So you're gonna have to sort of find a compromise and sort of just follow that, like a template, I guess. And you don't want too many rules because you don't want like to feel not free, you know, your balls of energy and excitement. So you kind of like have to have that freedom, that sense of freedom. But having some guidelines is really good for this couple. Because once you got some guidelines, you can just have a good time, relax, enjoy yourselves. There is so much passion in this combination that it can set the universe on fire. Fire. On fire! Handling emotions is going to require a lot from both of you. It will require time and awareness, and sometimes those can be really challenging for you both. So it takes time for you to really get a handle on your feelings. Make sure that you both have a system for how to deal with managing your relationship. A system. This is not a sugar daddy or sugar mama relationship. You just don't give everything to each other like that. But you definitely aren't afraid to treat each other to some nice things when you want to cheer each other up. And when you're not living together, you're always welcome to come stay with them or hang out with them. Like if you need to, if you're in a tough spot. Mm -hmm. Those situations are not permanent. But although you both like to stick to those rules that you both created, you're able to open your heart during different situations that might call for some more compassion and empathy. If you're not feeling that empathic link, 
that I keep talking about or you're not like feeling this way that the way I'm describing and you're seeing each other it's usually because mood swings or your egos are getting in the way or someone's ego so yeah if you're like what the fuck is this girl talking about empathically linked like I don't feel that way at all it's probably because you guys just like there's some instability there's like ego problems and like mood swings like that's the only reason that probably you feel that way and that's something you need to explore even if it's something you like don't really believe in like it's probably there i don't think a leo or you would actually try unless it were really possible but it does work and it's not one in a million but it is very special Love between these two can be very profound, very, very profound. And to me, that's like even more incentive to try it. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why aren't you? <laughs> no matter what type of relationship you have, there will be issues when it comes to those expectations. So you have to be very clear on what those are. When the relationship is unbalanced, it can get very violent at times. Look, you both as individuals can be very self-centered. Now, same-sex marriages are a different story. They're often much more successful. They have a higher success rate. Like usually even more so than heterosexual couples. When this relationship is unbalanced, jealousy can wedge its way in and mess with things. Getting married to a Leo might amplify your impatience. And impatience is a big part of who you are, so. Now you both can get very restless. It's just part of your personalities. It's part of your individualities. You can be needy at times, okay? Don't deny it. And you definitely have your freaking crazy ups and downs. And you have very inconsistent behavior that can drive a Leo crazy when your relationship is unbalanced you both have to work 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 on anger management rage rooms can come in handy to blow off steam you know rage rooms i tried one the other day but yeah you're gonna need to blow off some steam when things are unhealthy so keep that in mind your leo will share a need for self-exploration going into this relationship you both often lack self-awareness. Remember that loyalty needs to be earned and you cannot force it upon each other. When your relationship is unstable, it can be very unhealthy, very unhealthy. You have a tendency to be impatient on your own. That is something that you share. Leo will probably have a hard time with your unpredictability. They need to have a sense of like, they need to know where things are going. And everything will be up in the air with you. Being friends with a Leo is not complicated at all. It's not. If a Leo yells at you or tries to make demands, that's only going to make you not want to be with them. So to all my Leos out there, know what you are signing on to. And know that if you try to put your foot down, a Taurus Gemini will not want to be with you anymore. Without a system or a plan, this relationship will just be a mess. A mess. This is not a traditional marriage if you two get married. You're both very independent people with your own responsibilities. You watch out for yourselves. This is not about being homemakers. You don't care as much about the household. Like the white picket fence, ugh, it's not your thing, gross. Don't expect to have like a big happy family with like, you know, like living in this house your whole life. No, very unconventional. You're the type of couple that if you got married, you'd probably have like a themed wedding. You both are individuals and that is how it is when you're in a committed relationship. But if you want things to work out, then you're going to need to sit down with them and really come up with a contract. I mean, if you want to, you can both like come up with a legit contract and sign it. I don't know why that sounds like fun, but maybe it's like one of those like things that like kind of turns people on. I don't know, weird, weird. I'm learning so much about myself through making this. You both can achieve so much. 
It's not uncommon for you to fall apart because you're both so focused on your independence and on being with your own self, like doing things on your own. And then you get swept away, right? Like swept away romantically and all these feelings. And then it's really tough to have an agreement. So it's so important for this match to have that agreement. Yay, okay, I did it. I talked and I made this video and woo, I'm feeling all of this alcohol because truth is like, it's been a while guys. Like, oh my God. So I'm getting braces. I'm really excited cause I'll have vampire teeth. See like, okay, so I have baby teeth. I feel like I've talked about it this many times but I'm gonna talk about it again because like, it's a part of my life right now and it's like the most interesting thing about me at this moment in time, I think. Two canine teeth are like coming down but one of them is like stuck up there under my palate, like embedded in my bone. So I'm gonna have to get it surgically taken out or like attach chains to it to move it into place because I'm getting braces. So like I love my teeth. I think some of the meanest comments I get on my channel are about my teeth but like I love them. I think they're fucking cool. So I'm interested to see what they look like. Um, I know it's gonna suck but you know what? I love smoothies, like I love green smoothies and like soup and stuff, so I don't really care. Oh, you know what's gonna suck though is I'm gonna have to give up blowjobs, like for like two or three years and that's gonna suck. And I'm tired of people being like, no, you can give a blowjob. Like, I'm like, first of all, what like makes you feel like you can tell me what I can do about giving blowjobs? Like, you don't even know my situation, like what the fuck and so, like why, why do you feel entitled to have like an opinion about this um and second like no it would be fucking painful because i'm gonna have like a sharp tooth in my mouth anyway yeah yep yep if you are a leo if you are a Torremini like me please comment below please let me know in the comment section what you think? Do you agree with me? What are your thoughts? Subscribe to my channel. Goodbye.